What's going on, Brashes and Brashettes? It's CH from Homebrew for Life. Today we're gonna teach your mom how to brew a beer. Today we're gonna randomly move to Tennessee. Today we're gonna get an apartment in Tennessee. Today we're gonna become the apartment brewer. Today we're gonna explain why anything can be an IPA if you dream hard enough. Biker Stash IPA. Today you're gonna watch B-roll from the 80s. Today we're gonna play Breath of the Wild until we die. Legend of Zelda IPA, how have I not thought of this? Big shout out to my man CH though for rocking this kind of stash. Cheers to eating good and drinking good. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be brewing up the second beer in the Kvike series that I've been working on. This time we're gonna be using a strain known as Fromgarden Kvike. Uh, just like the last one we did, the Voss Azaka smash beer, this is gonna be a smash beer as well. A very simple recipe, a very easy brew, all things considered. And hopefully if all of that comes together in a really nice way, we get this really juicy, crushable American style pale ale with loads and loads of melon flavor uh, in about three or four days. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to having that ready to go within the week. If you haven't already heard of Kvike, you might be living under a rock, but it's okay, I'll still tell you. Kvike is essentially a Norwegian farmhouse yeast that has been brewed with for hundreds of years in the Scandinavian region. However, it only just came to knowledge within the rest of the global brewing community and especially in the home brewing community over the last like 10 years or so. And ever since then, homebrewers have basically been using Kvike as a cheat code, basically to make really fast, great, delicious beers uh, without any sort of negative connotations from fermentation temperature control issues or anything like that. Kvike essentially can ferment at a very hot temperature. Um, in fact, it prefers a very hot temperature. So typically with a Kvike fermentation, if you want to bring out that extra fruitiness, you want to ferment this between like 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a very hot temperature for any type of brewing yeast except for Kvike. So that gives home brewers who don't have fermentation temperature control a ton of flexibility that they didn't used to have. I mean, you can't just take an American ale yeast or an English ale yeast or a German yeast of any kind uh, and ferment it at high temperatures like that and expect a good result. So it does kind of feel a bit like a cheat code for most people. There are dozens of different Kvike strains and each of them have some slight nuances to them. To date, I've only ever used Voss, Hornendal, and Lutra before, but today we're gonna be trying something completely brand brand new uh, and using from Garden Kvike. As I said, this is supposedly going to give a really nice melony character if it's fermented at the right temperatures. We'll talk more about the yeast in the fermentation section later on in the video though. However, the other ingredient that I have not used before but I'm very excited to play with is German Huel Melon Hops. These are a new variety of German hops that were released by the Huel Research Institute, which is a German hop grower. They have been responsible for some of the most interesting hops coming out of Germany over the last several years, varieties like Polaris, Mandarina Bavaria, and Saphir, to name a few. Huel Melon is another one that they're very much known for. Again, it carries their name. And supposedly it has this really nice melony flavor. I have about a half a pound of that, so I'm gonna try my best to pull out as much of that flavor as possible to create a really nice kind of hazy pale ale uh, with that melon character. Something that stands out quite a bit from your typical uh, tropical fruit kind of flavored hazy ale. So really quickly, a big thank you to a couple organizations for helping make this video possible. First of all, Northern Brewer, they provided all the ingredients for this batch of beer, and if you're not already aware, they're no longer owned by AV InBev, so check them out for ingredients and such. Also, Clawhammer Supply, they make the system here that I have been using over the last year and a half or so. It's a great system. Uh, they have a great YouTube channel, many people know them for that. Go check them out if you're curious about that. So let's jump into the recipe now. So once again, this is a smash beer, a very simple recipe. So we're gonna be starting out with 12 pounds of gold and promise. It has a flavor that's somewhere between basic Turo and very full flavored Maris Otter. It's a very nice color. It's a very nice flavor. It works very well in beers with a lot of hop presence. It gives you that malt backbone that you need in order to basically paint the hops on that canvas. It's one of my favorite base malts and I'm going to be using it for all of these smash beers. So for our hops, we're gonna be using, as I said, Huel Melon. I have eight ounces of that, and we're gonna be adding it incrementally throughout the boil and into a whirlpool at the end to really squeeze out as much hop flavor as possible. All of my Huel Melon is 5.2% alpha acid. So starting out, this is a 30 minute boil. I'm gonna be adding one ounce of Huel Melon at 20 minutes, one ounce at 10 minutes, 
two ounces at zero minutes. And then I'll be adding four ounces in a whirlpool. I'm gonna hold that whirlpool at 180 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes, and then we'll continue chilling from there. Once we chill, we're gonna bring it down to only about 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, where we'll pitch our yeast, which is from Garden Kvike. Now, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different here, and I'm gonna be pitching straight flakes of Kvike yeast. This is all sent to me by channel viewer Jasper Falk. Big thank you to him for hooking me up with some of these cool dried Kvike strains. Lars Marius Garshall, who literally wrote the book on Kvike, uh, has suggested pitching just straight flakes instead of rehydrating them. So I rehydrated in the last video and it had great results, but I wanna see what happens if we just pitch the dry yeast right into the wort and see what happens. I'm curious, uh, hopefully it is a good result. So what I'm going for on a water profile for this one is kind of reactive based on the way that the Voss Zaka Pale Ale water profile came out. I felt like that beer really had the potential to be a lot juicier than it was. I think it would have been better served being juicier. And I used the water profile on that beer that had a very high sulfate to chloride ratio, which resulted in that dryness, in that bitterness of flavor. So what I'm doing here in this beer is kind of flipping that around on its head a little bit. I'm going for a slightly less mineral one a little bit more balanced one here but this is gonna have a high chloride to sulfate and what that means is you're not gonna have as much of that bitter sulfate character making the hops pop out as much what this is gonna do is create a slightly juicier flavor character um, and I think it might benefit this beer quite a bit so for our water profile we're going for 51 parts per million of calcium 7 parts per million of magnesium 26 parts per million of sodium 104 parts per million of chloride 62 parts per million of sulfate and zero parts per million of bicarbonate in order to get that water profile i will be adding two grams of gypsum two grams of epsom two grams of sodium chloride and four grams of calcium chloride to the mash water and i have eight gallons of distilled water in the claw hammer system right now that is going to have that water profile applied to it uh, one more thing to talk about kvike with in terms of fermentation is it's quite notorious for a ph drop after the beer has fermented so the beer starts out real young super juicy super nice if you had your typical 5.4 mash ph and you nailed that you're gonna have a really good tasting beer for the first week or so but after that, for some reason, the pH starts to drop slowly down a couple points, and it ends up being a little bit more harsh, a little bit more acidic as time goes on. I won't. I don't think that's a consistent drop over time. It doesn't sour the beer. It just adds a little edge to it. So I think what I'm gonna do is try and compensate for that in the mash pH here today. So we're gonna do a simple, straightforward mash at 154 degrees Fahrenheit, a slightly higher mash temperature to try and get a little bit extra uh, residual sugar in there to kind of give a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of higher final gravity to boost the melony flavor of these hops. I want this to be really delicious instead of being super dry. I added eight gallons of distilled water to my Clawhammer Supply 120 volt system and started to heat it up to the mash temperature. I also measured out my water salts and added those to the strike water and I milled my grain. Once the water had reached the mash in temperature, I mashed in with the grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps I had in the mash and then started recirculating. I let the mash sit at 154 for 60 minutes, but 10 minutes in I took a pH measurement as usual and I saw a sort of lower than planned pH of 5.4, so I added a few grams of slaked lime to raise the pH, and in hindsight, this may not have been the best idea. Once the mash rested for an hour, I raised to the mash out step of 170 and let that rest for 15 minutes until the wort ran clear, and then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for 15 more minutes. Then I set the controller to 100% power at this time just to get a jump start on the boil. Using my Anton Parr Easy Dense, I saw a pre-boil gravity of about 1048, which was only two points lower than the target. Once I reached the boil, I did nothing for the first 10 minutes, but 20 minutes from the end, I added my 20 minute bittering addition, which was one ounce of Huel Melon.
Once 10 more minutes had elapsed, I added some yeast nutrient and I added my 10 minute hop addition, which was one more ounce of Huel Melon. Ten minutes later, I added my zero minute hop addition, which was two ounces of Huel Melon. Then I killed the boil by starting to recirculate boiling wort through the chiller and the pump. And after being sure the inside of the chiller and the pump were all sterilized, then I began to chill down only to about 180 Fahrenheit for the Whirlpool. And at this point, I added my Whirlpool hops, four ounces of Huel Melon. I held the Whirlpool at this temperature for 20 minutes, and then I continued to chill all the way down to 85 Fahrenheit, where I took an OG sample using the Easy Dense, and I saw an original gravity of 1054, which was four points lower than the target, but still not bad. So then I aerated by splashing into my Spike CF5. Then I pitched the straight from Garden Flakes and left it to ferment with the heating pad set to 85 Fahrenheit. So for the fermentation on this beer, Kvike is relatively simple so long as you treat it properly. It can feel like a cheat code just simply because of how easy it is to use, but you can have issues with it I have before if you don't treat it properly. The first thing you want to make sure you do is use double the yeast nutrient that you would normally use for a five gallon batch. So in my case, I'm using Weiss beer nutrient. I'm going to add about five grams of that to the boil instead of two grams of it as I usually do. Kvike, especially in low gravity beers like this one, is extremely nutrient hungry and it requires that little extra nutrient kick to really ferment and continue and just not chug along. The second thing to make sure we do is we're going to pitch this hot. You want to make sure you pitch Kvike like somewhere between about 75 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. You go a little higher than that you can risk killing it off um, and then that would be bad. The hotter you pitch it at the beginning of fermentation, the quicker it's going to get started and the more fruity flavor you're going to get out of it. Um, and all in all, it just makes it go a little bit faster. It's going to probably start fermenting within about four hours after pitching it. This stuff is awesome. And we're going to keep it hot. I'm going to try and keep it around 85 degrees Fahrenheit just to keep it going and moving fast. Uh, 85 is a good zone for getting a good amount of fruitiness and a good fermentation speed. And it'll be done probably within three or four days at this temperature. The Vasazaka Pale Ale I made came out with about four days of fermentation and it was ready to keg at that point in time. Of course, you can use any strain of Kvike with this beer if you want to. I'm just choosing to use Fromm Garden in this case because of that melony character people have reported. Because it's a pale ale, because it's got some hop character in it though. The only ones I wouldn't recommend using outright would be ones like Lutra or Scar. Those are very, very clean yeasts that don't really leave much fruity flavor behind. Again, that's fine if you want to use them. It just that wouldn't be my recommendation. You can always dry hop this beer. You can always ferment it under pressure if you want to. This it, really, this, the sky's your limit with this one. You could do whatever you want. These types of smash beers are super flexible and super easy. And they're really good vehicles for experimenting and playing around with different brewing techniques. From my point of view, I don't think that a pressure fermentation is necessary for a Kvike beer, unless you really just want to trap all those hop aromatics within the beer and keep them from blowing off due to the aggressive fermentation. If you're dry hopping this beer, which I am not, you might want to do that on the earlier side of fermentation rather than on the later side, just because this fermentation is so fast and so vigorous um, that you may end up with a beer that's completely fermented before you add your dry hops. But still, the world is your oyster on this one. Do what you want to do with it, and you're going to have a great time with this beer. Once the fermentation has finished, I'm going to transfer into a keg right away and uh, get this thing force carved and up on the kegerator and ready to drink probably within, you know, four or five days. That's one of the best things about Kvike is you just get a beer basically right away uh, within a work week. It's awesome. Now, if you don't want to make this as a Kvike beer, you also have that option. Pick a nice estuary American ale yeast or go with an English style yeast to make this kind of like your favorite hazy. And of course, treat that fermentation appropriately according to temperatures. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you go that route either. So in a nutshell, what we are going to be doing is fermenting this one at about 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit for probably three to four days, keeping it nice and hot, finishing out real fast. We're going to transfer right into a keg. We're going to force carb that thing up and we're going to be ready to serve probably within five days. So I will catch you guys uh, at the end of the week. So cheers.
The fermentation on this beer actually went relatively quickly. Uh, as standard for a Kvike fermentation, about three to four days, I reached my final gravity very quickly. The final gravity was about 1016, which uh, gave us an apparent attenuation of about 69%. Nice. The final gravity was a bit higher than anticipated, though. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with the Golden Promise itself, though. Um, definitely not as high as the last one, though. They gave us a very nice, sessionable 5.1% ABV. So the beer is called One in a Melon and comes in at 5.1% ABV and 42 IBUs. So for the appearance of the beer, it is pouring a super hazy, nice, uh, kind of medium gold color. It's a little bit darker than your typical New England IPA, but it's not orange, it's not brown or anything like that. It's just a little bit of a darker gold. Um, again, seems like these Golden Promise beers are really coming out darker. It has a good, robust head on it. Um, it does fade after some time, but there's still a good layer on the surface. Nice white bubbles, good structure, uh, and overall, not a bad looking beer. So now let's go in for aroma. It's definitely a little bit less juicy uh, smelling than I anticipated, but it has, it definitely has that melon characteristic. It smells a little bit like a, a, a medium citrus kind of smell, a little bit of orange in there, um, but definitely there's that honeydew melon. It's not significantly aromatic though. Definitely would have liked to see more aroma, I think, uh, otherwise. All right, now let's go in for mouthfeel. So for the mouthfeel on this one, it's kind of like a medium light character. Um, it's actually not, despite the slightly higher final gravity, it's really not all that full bodied. It just feels like a regular old pale ale. I mean, it's really not actually all that much to talk about in terms of mouthfeel. It's not really silky smooth like a hazy IPA would be, um, but it's also definitely not nearly as full. So now let's go ahead and talk about flavor. Mm. It's a relatively flavorful beer, but it's actually not as much as I was expecting, uh, especially considering I put half a pound of hops into this. Granted, Huel Melon is kind of a lower alpha hop, you know, especially compared to something like Azaka, which I used last time. I'm not getting as much of a fruity punch as I did with the Azaka. Uh, it's got that melon character for sure. It's kind of subdued though. What I really am getting is a really nice, wonderful malt flavor. Um, again, Golden Promise just never fails to deliver like just this wonderful malt backbone. It's a very tasty beer, all things considered. It's just not really all that unique. I mean, the Huel Melon definitely makes it a little bit unique, but it's not really, it doesn't stand out to me in, a, in any particularly special way. However, on the flip side of this, the benefit of not having the hops take center stage here uh, is actually that we can really get the yeast characteristics to come out a bit more. The Fram Garden I used is definitely interesting. It's actually got a little bit more of a farmhouse character to it than most Kvikes I've used. That might have something more to do with the fact that these dried strains that got sent to me are, are actually like the real Kvike blend. They're not the isolated strains from a big name yeast lab. So this is actually a relatively unique experience. Each type of Kvike isn't really a single strain. It's more like a, a combination of several strains along with a little bit of bacteria as well, which gives you some really interesting kind of flavor characteristics. So in this case, I'm getting a lot of lemon and apple uh, from the yeast actually, as well as definitely that little bit of a farmyard character, a little bit of mushroom as well. I tend to get mushroom with Hornadol sometimes, but it's definitely, definitely here in the Fromm Garden. There's also another flavor in here, which I can really only describe as like dusty. Um, it's not the oxidation cardboard flavor. It's something different. It's earthy. It's like very earthy. Not that I've eaten a clot of dirt, but that's kind of the character. Definitely not like a desirable flavor characteristic, but it definitely makes this beer different. It's got that slightly bitter kind of Mahindu melon character, but not really in extreme quantity. It's not a melon bomb in the way that my Izaka Voss beer was a mango bomb. This is different. On the plus side though, it's very drinkable. Um, 
And if you're not like a big IPA person, and you just you prefer pale ales and blonde ales, this is actually really gonna be a good beer for you. Uh, it's restrained in flavor, and it's got some unique characteristics, but it's uh, overall just uh, a decent beer. Um, I prefer a little bit more hop flavor here. I have two theories as to why there's not so much hop flavor in this. First is that Kvike is a very vigorous fermenter. What that means is that sometimes that massive amount of CO2 production actually strips all of the hop aroma and character out of the beer during fermentation and just blows it off out of the fermenter. Um, that may have happened here, but it wasn't all that vigorous of a fermentation. It was actually just like a standard kind of level of Krause and nothing too crazy. The other theory is that Hill Melon just isn't all that pungent of a hop. Um, and I think maybe you just need a little bit more to get that extra melon character. The beer's pH landed in a pretty good spot. It's actually not as harsh as it used to be when it was younger. Um, that pH drop is starting to happen now and it's starting to really come into a decent flavor zone. Um, at first it was a little astringent. At first it was a little harsh. Um, it's not getting that harsh aging characteristic that I got from the uh, Voss Pale Ale. So, that's kind of nice. That extra pH bump I might have gone a bit too far though because the beer is definitely darker than it should be. Not only due to Golden Promise, but also probably due to a slightly higher mash pH than I should have had. So I'm gonna try and continue playing around with that, try to find out where those bounds are for the mash pH on a Kvike. I added some uh, cold side findings to this as well, just to see what would happen to the flavor if it drops out. It doesn't really seem like that's having any effect uh, right now, so, so I got a pretty stable haze in here, I think. So now for potential improvements on this one. First of all, definitely wanna make sure that I get a slightly lower mash pH, so probably something more like a 5.6. Secondly, if I continue to treat this as a smash beer and I used a ton of fuel melon again, I would probably actually add a dry hop, maybe one, maybe two dry hops. It is really classified as an aroma hop, not a flavor hop, so I think I think it might perform a lot better in the dry hop than in the Whirlpool. Um, again, first time using it, first time playing with it, I just wanted to see what would happen. And I just chose not to dry hop this time, but I think a dry hop would actually really help this beer out quite a bit. I don't know if I would really use From Garden again. It's definitely a little bit funky. I'm not getting a huge amount of mellow character out of it, but maybe I just needed to ferment it hotter. Um, if any of you guys have experience with the From Garden strain, let me know down in the comments uh, so I can kind of get a better idea of Maybe, maybe I did something wrong here. Let me know. But I think that's gonna about do it for us today. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and comment down below. All of this costs you nothing and helps me out quite a bit. I really do appreciate it. Secondly, if you wanna support the channel, there's a number of ways to do so. I have a t-shirt store in the description box where you can pick up this t-shirt. There's also plenty of other t-shirt designs and options and different things that you can purchase that will help support me. I get about 30% of the sticker price on all of those items, so check it out if you're interested. I also have a Patreon. You guys are really helping drive the production behind this channel. Over the last two years, you've enabled me to buy brand new recording equipment, audio equipment, lighting equipment, and editing software. All of these things come from your contributions, and it means the world to me. It really helps out a lot, so thank you to you guys. I also have channel memberships, about two bucks a month. If you're curious about it, hit that join button next to the subscribe button. It will show you what you have for perks. Just a couple things to help you stand out a little bit from your peers down in the comments section. I also have an Amazon store where I have linked all of my equipment that I use that's available on Amazon that I thoroughly recommend. If you're in the market for some equipment, it's just a great way to find some stuff that I just generally recommend. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer. Check that out for more frequent content updates than here. And last but certainly not least, if you are still here, Holy crap, thank you for watching to the end of the video. It means the world to me, only about 30% of you guys do it. This one is for you guys. Until the next one, cheers.